Matt, first of all, thanks for spending some time with those of us sure. at Arrow TV. Uh, before we get into the order of the day, I just wanted to check with you real quick and just get your overall synopsis of this year's uh, Heli Expo. Oh, it's uh, phenomenal. It's, uh, I mean, the support from the attendees, from the, uh, the exhibitors has just been uh, excellent. And we actually broke uh, pretty much most of the records again for the fourth year running. We just got word that we're over 19,000 attendees, which is an all-time record for us. We have 650 exhibitors on the floor, and we've occupied the uh, Dallas Convention Center wall-to-wall, -wall, which is almost a million square feet, with 60 helicopters on the floor. So we're pretty happy right now. At the same time, though, there are clouds on the horizon. We have, over the course of covering aviation news, had to deal with a couple of very significant thorns in our sides, all based on a concept of noise that we're not quite sure exists. Well, yeah, that's true. Senator Schumer instituted a notice of proposed rulemaking with the FAA almost a year and a half, two years ago. And the basic premise of the uh, Notice of Proposed Rulemaking at the time was to uh, authorize the FAA, which they don't have this authorization now, and mandate that they respond to noise complaints from the community by developing restricted routes just for helicopters and restricted airspace and altitude requirements. Obviously, that is something that really doesn't make good sense in terms of rulemaking. There's not a connection to anything to do with safety. It has nothing to do with the efficient use of the airspace. This is strictly a visceral response to noise complaints coming from the community. The interesting part that we like to point out is that the HAI and the industry in general has had a very aggressive fly neighborly community relations program for at least 25, 30 years. And that's worked very well when we work directly with the community. What this is is trying to shortchange that process and basically say if some individuals complain, the FAA is going to take a responsive action to that and restrict airspace to helicopters with the unintended consequence that maybe you're now moving those noise issues and you're creating a safety issue. You're compressing aircraft into airspace. You're also potentially putting aircraft in operating environments that they would rather avoid, be it over water, be it over terrain, or populated areas that they would rather not fly over. And there's no research element to this. As you pointed out, is there really a problem? We take seriously when we get noise complaints, but we do the homework and verify. And in many occasions, we found out that it was a very small minority. Classic example of this is up in the very area where uh, Senator Schumer is addressing this issue. We have a hotline and complaint lines that we monitor. We analyze those. 85% of the complaints were being generated by 10 households. In one case, one individual was making hundreds of calls a month just to the hotline and making the, these complaints to the le elected officials. Is that a rationale to start moving aircraft and airspace and, and potentially changing the dynamics of a complex airspace environment like uh, New York? So we're very against this. It, when it didn't move quick enough as an NPRM, Senator Schumer actually created a law proposal and attached it to the FAA authorization bill at the 11th hour. Luckily, cooler heads prevailed in the Congress and they realized that this was bad lawmaking. This, this was going to set a very dangerous precedent that aviation could actually be controlled and regulated by a noise complaint rather than safety and efficient use of airspace, which is the current mandate. So we're now back in a situation where the law that Schumer proposed has been taken out of the authorization bill and will not be in place. We're back to the NPRM. And we just inquired this morning about the status of that, and the NPRM said they got over a 1,000 responses, the majority of those being against doing this, and in essence, they're in review. But we're watching that extremely closely because of the domino effect that it could occur. If this were to become a regulation or a law, that would mean that every constituent can pick up the phone, call their politicians, relay the message over, and the next thing you know, the FAA is running out of airspace as to where to put these aircraft because people are complaining. I want to point out one very interesting thing. There was a congressional study to study helicopter noise in urban areas a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. One of the main findings of that study was that the best methodology to solve this problem was get the stakeholders together on working groups. Mm -hmm. The community, the FAA, and the industry. We've been doing that for 30 years. Well, this community has been incredibly responsive to that. I, I, I can tell you there's any operation I've seen where there isn't a cognizance of their impact on the communities around them. But at the same time, too, when you take a look at what's happening with today's fleet and the technology involved, the, the average helicopter today is far quieter than it's ever been. Oh, very much so. I mean, the classic example is the floor right behind us here. There's technology now that is advancing towards quieter technology and green aircraft for environmental, you know, uh, initiatives, and the industry is hitting it head on. We have very aggressive programs in fly neighborly 
you know, collateral material and video training programs that we put out to the crews. And the manufacturers have actually put supplements in the flight manual how to fly this aircraft quieter. So we are very sensitive to that issue. Matt, we really appreciate your time and more important, your good work, and we thank you so much. Thanks a million for the opportunity to talk with you. Aero TV is brought to you by the DFC-90 all-digital attitude-based autopilot delivers significant performance and safety improvements over previous generation systems. Its innovative flight envelope protection guards against autopilot-induced stalls, and the straight and level mode provides one-button recovery from unusual attitudes for an added measure of safety. Immensely popular within the Cirrus community, the DFC-90 is now being made available for a growing list of aircraft including Piper Matrix and Mirage, Cessna 182s, and Beach Bonanzas and Barons. Fly with confidence. Fly with DFC-90.